you all, it's me, Sandra, from La Madeleine. Today I thought I could make a video about three dimensional stitches. So, stitches that are all made in the same spot and closed together to create a beautiful 3D texture. Here I have three of them. These stitches are often not identified correctly in patterns and designs. People are not always certain to know which is which. So in this video, I will show you the difference between the three. In yellow, we have the puff stitch, my favorite. In purple, we have the bubble stitch, with which has more dimension than a puff stitch. And finally, in pink, it's the popcorn stitch, the most defined stitch of all three. These three stitches are really pretty, and they're really special, thanks to their very pronounced texture. They eat a lot of yarn, so be aware of that, but that's what gives them their dimensional look. So today I'll explain the difference between the three and how to do them as well, step by step. So grab your material and let's get started. Let's start with this puff stitch. I just finished my single crochet row. I started this sample with a multiple of two. In this case, 14 chains. Then, in the second chain from the hook, I made single crochet. For the next next row, we need to chain one, and we can turn our work. In the very first stitch of this row, we make a very simple half double crochet. In the next stitch, we will put our first puff stitch. So, how do we make a puff stitch? There are variations of the puff stitch from a pattern to another or from a designer to another. So I'm going to show you how I do it. In short, we have to make four half double crochet together all put in the same space. So yarn over, insert your hook in the stitch and pull up a loop. Give it a little height, I'd say about the height of two chains. Then yarn over, put your hook in the same space, pull up a loop. And we have to repeat that two more times. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. You'll notice that I always hold the loops on my hook when I insert my hook in the stitch. It's to make sure that nothing slips off my hook, since there are so many loops. Generally, the puff stitches are finished that way. Yarn over and go through all the loops on the hook. Then we make a chain one. I'm not a huge fan of this technique because of the chain one, so here's how I do it. I pull the yarn through all the loops on the hook, except the last one. Then I make a new yarn over and I close the stitch. It's like we create a single crochet on top of our puff stitch. And in the next stitch, I make a half double crochet. In the next stitch, we make a puff stitch once again. The puff stitch is really more defined on the back of the work, as you can see here. But in the end, it's really a per personal preference. I do prefer it on the back side, but you might prefer it on the front, because it's a little bit more discreet. It's totally up to you. So after my half double crochet here, I'll make another puff stitch. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. And we do that two more times, always while holding the loops on our hook with our finger when we insert the hook. Another yarn over, pull through all the loops on the hook, except the last one. And we finish the stitch with the last yarn over. And that's it! The next stitch I want to show you is the bubble stitch. That's the one right here. It has the same multiple than the puff stitch. The same amount of chains for the foundation, so 14. And in the second chain from the hook, I made single crochets all the way across. Here I just finished a row of single crochets. I'm ready to start the new row. Make a chain one and turn your work. Once again, just like the puff stitch, the bubble stitch is textured on the back side of the work instead of the front. 
in the first stitch of the row, make a single crochet. I prefer the single crochet for this stitch because it makes the bubble pop on the back. But you could use any stitch that you want depending on your preference. The bubble stitch is different by the stitch used and the way we close them all together. In short, we make 5 double crochets in the same space, all closed together. Yarn over. Insert the hook. And pull up a loop. Let's make the first step of a double crochet. Yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. Normally, to complete a double crochet, we would make another yarn over and go through the last two loops on the hook. But we will stop here. We will let that double crochet like that have done. We'll make another four just like that. We now have two double crochets half done on a hard hook. Let's repeat that three more times. One, two, and three. You could make only four double crochets or three double crochets, or even six if you want in the bubble stitch. The amount of stitches will affect the bubble that's going to be more or less dimensional on the back side. So now that we have all of our double crochet have done on the hook, yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. And you have a bubble stitch. And in the next stitch, make a single crochet. Let's make another bubble stitch together. In the next stitch, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Let's repeat that four more times. One, two, three, four. I now have all my double crochets I've done on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all the loops. And in the next stitch, make a single crochet. Make sure to make it tight so the bubble will pop on the back side. You will now alternate a bubble stitch and a single crochet all the way across the row. And for the next row, you chain one turn and make a full row of single crochet. The last stitch that I want to show you is the popcorn stitch. This one is different than the others because it is textured on the front of the work instead of the back. So same thing here, same multiple, same way to start the sample than the other stitches. But I did half double crochets between each rows of popcorn instead of single crochets. I'm going to show you. I just finished my row of half double crochets. Chain one and turn our work. Once again, it's the same thing than the others, which means that you have to alternate your textured stitch with a regular stitch. I start the row, the row with a half double crochet in the first stitch. And now we make a popcorn. The popcorn is made from five double crochets, but the technique to close them all together is different compared to the bubble, and I will show you why. Make five full and completed double crochets in the same space. A double crochet is yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. We need to make that a total of five times in the same space. Now pull up the loop that's on your hook because we need to take off that hook. Then insert it in the first double crochet that you made. 
you can locate it. Mine is just here. If you're not sure which one it is, count backwards from the last stitch that you made. One, two, three, four, five. And insert your hook in that double crochet. Put the loop back on your hook and you're going to pull it through the double crochet. And it closes all the double crochets together. We just created our very first popcorn. In the next stitch, I like to make a half double crochet. I will make another popcorn again with you. We complete five double crochet all in the same space. One, two, three, four, and five. Pull up the working yarn, count back from the last stitch you just made. One, two, three, four, five. Insert your hook in that stitch, put the working loop back on the hook, tighten the bit, and pull through the stitch on the hook. Et voilà! And in the next stitch, a half double crochet. Alternate between the half double crochet and the popcorn all the way to the end of the row. You should finish the row with a half double crochet. For the next row, chain one, turn your work and make a full row of half double crochets. By alternating the textured stitches and the regular stitches, all your popcorns will appear on the same side of your work. And that was the popcorn stitch. All three stitches are super pretty, super textured. You can use them to make hats, scarves, blankets, anything really. Each stitch has its variants. That means that you could modify certain things to make them your own. The amount of stitches closed together for each stitch. The height of the stitches made between them. The amount of stitches made between them can also be changed, depending if you want your texture to be far apart or not. So, try them, modify them, and now you can also name them. I hope you have learned something today. Use the stitches in your project. It is so pretty and so fun. So here you go, it's finished, see you in the next video, bye!